steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. New every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. Dear God, we're asking you to speak to our hearts today. Do whatever it takes to reach us. Amen. Traveling from 29 Palms to Desert Hot Springs this morning, I was listening to a song on the tape player, and it said, I'm on my way to heaven, and the journey gets sweeter every day, walking and talking with Jesus all along the way. My heart gets so happy, I shout and I sing night and day, I'm on my way to heaven, and the journey gets sweeter every day. I've had some ups and downs. Sorrows and frowns may pass my way. Sorrows may get me down and cause sunny skies to turn to gray. But I'm on my way to heaven and the journey gets sweeter every day. May your faith in God grow because you spent time with Jesus here today. <coughs> It's all about Jesus. If you have a Bible available, I invite you to open it to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. For our scripture reading this morning, it said, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse 6, Hebrews chapter 11. 11 verse 6 but without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him some believe that reality can only be achieved through an altered state of consciousness. Some believe that the traditional Christian religion has no meaning in today's world. Some believe their only hope is in a God of their own making. The Creator is lost sight of and the creation becomes God. Some believe in a mystical experience where time and space and morality is transcended. Some believe the universe has a dimension inhabited by spiritual beings, but no personal creator God. Some try to control these beings. They may call them guides or ascended masters. They try to gain enlightenment and power and energy in this way. Some believe that whatever the mind believes is true. Some search for other gods and goddesses, and they call on these spiritual powers. The Bible teaches in the book of John, chapter 1, that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made Amen. that was made. Some believe that God is an impersonal force that exists in everything. If anything exists that is not God, they believe it is not real. It is only an illusion. Some believe in rituals or techniques to become one with God rather than using a cognitive belief system, rather than believing in faith in a supernatural being. 
that desires to be our friend. Some believe in worshiping nature rather than worshiping the God that created nature. Some believe that humans can decide for themselves what is right or wrong, what is good or bad, what is evil or not evil, apart from the one who created all and knows best for our good. Some believe that the highest authority they're accountable to are themselves. Some believe there is no God. He loses his very existence in their belief system. Some believe the universe is all that exists and that the universe is real and God is an illusion. Some believe that they are the ultimate authority, that life has no eternal perspective. Some believe in no absolute standards, no absolute eternal truth, no measure of right and wrong, good or evil. Some believe that God is not personal and not active in the universe. Some believe that God has no desire to have a personal relationship with them. That God does not communicate with men and women. Some believe that no special revelation is necessary. That none has been given. Some believe that human reason is the guide for life. Some believe there is a personal God beyond the universe who created it, who sustains it, and has chosen to act within it in a redemptive way. Some believe that God reveals himself in nature and through special revelation, the Holy Bible, and through Jesus, the living word. Amen. Some believe that God is the ultimate frame of reference and that ethics are divinely revealed and not created by human beings. Some believe that God is the source of all life, goodness, love, authority, and provides a real frame of reference in which man can find true value, meaning, and significance. Some believe that a Christian's primary focus should be on information, conformity, doctrine. Some believe a Christian's focus should be on good behavior, piety, and rules. Some believe in Jesus as the redefined focus. Some believe it's all about Jesus. Some are ready to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit leading in their lives. Some believe the truth about God the Father that was confirmed by the life and death of His Son, Jesus Christ. Some believe God is not the kind of person His enemies have made Him out to be, arbitrary, un forgiving, severe. Some believe that God is just and loving. Just as loving as Jesus is. Just as willing to forgive and heal. Some believe that Christians build centers for healing and talk about the soon coming of Jesus and choose to keep the seventh day Sabbath because they love God and love to follow his teaching Amen. and because they love others. Some are responding in love to the love that God has demonstrated to them. A personal response to a personal God. What do you believe? I believe that each one of us, whether we realize it or not, are in the heart of Jesus close to his heart, heart to heart. Christians believe in Bible study and prayer, meditating on the words of scripture, thinking about what they mean and how to apply them to our lives. Christians call it one of the spiritual disciplines of faith, the devotional life. Let me ask you a question. Is it better to be devoted to information, even correct information, 
Or is it better to be devoted to the person who provided the information? I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. Amen. It's all about Jesus. It's better to be devoted to Jesus rather than techniques. In our devotion life, in our Bible study and prayer, it is important to study for the purpose of fellowship, developing communion with God, developing a personal relationship. John, in the very back of the Bible, was called 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John. We're looking at 1 John chapter 1. And verse 3, 1 John 1, verse 3. That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. In doing this, in having fellowship with Jesus Christ, would it be better to read the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, than talk about Jesus and his life and his death? Or would it be better to read history and prophecy for the purpose of fellowship? To develop friendship with Jesus, should I choose a volume of rebuke and reproof or a book about the desire of ages all about Jesus steps to Christ for devotion and fellowship there are many have that have turned away from prophetic writings the spirit of prophecy because someone majored in the instructional writings that were written for counsel instruction and reproof. There are other books that we call inspirational writings, devotional teachings. If a person only studies the instructional, they can become the type of person that has a special testimony for the person across the aisle. They have a reproof and a rebuke for every occasion. Please do not misunderstand when we say testimonies for the church can be a dangerous weapon in the hand of someone who does not know how to read Desire of Ages or Step to Christ. If a person does not know how to sit with Mary at the feet of Jesus and know personally his love and kindness and compassion, that person can use the Ten Commandments as a lethal weapon. The law and the gospel must go together. Instructional writings are important. Their study has a place of importance. But for the devotional relationship with Jesus day by day, in order to become close friends with him, we must study the gospels. Amen. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Desire of Age is all about Jesus. Page 83 says it would be well for us to spend a thoughtful hour each day in contemplation of the life of Christ, we should take it point by point and let the imagination grasp each scene. It is by uplifting Jesus that we are changed into his image. Turn the pages of your scriptures to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, beginning with verse 16. It's all about Jesus. 2 Corinthians 6, beginning with verse 16. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? Ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, 
and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. He wants us to be sons and daughters. There's a story about two daughters. I don't know who the father was, but we do know about the daughters. The daughters are mentioned in a few places, including Luke chapter 10. Take a moment. Luke chapter 10, beginning with verse 38. Jesus entered a certain village named Bethany. And a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. Wow. Martha was a homeowner. It would be rare for a woman to own property, a home, in those days. But it says Martha received Jesus into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me alone to serve? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. One thing needful, to sit at the feet of Jesus. There was a young ruler, when presented with a choice between heavenly treasure and worldly greatness, the rich young ruler plainly demonstrated that he did not keep the law of God, wealth, and possessions were his idol. Jesus wanted to be the essence of his life. Instead, wealth was the essence of his life. Possessions, things, toys. The rich man chose wealth over heavenly treasures that Jesus offered him. Riches were his idol. Jesus invited the young man to turn from his ambitious projects and make Jesus the essence of his life. To give up earthly treasure that was seen and trade it in for heavenly treasure that was invisible. What a great risk for the man because he was very rich, very wealthy. He refused the offer of eternal life and decided not to make Jesus the essence of your life. How are you? How am I about making Jesus the essence of our life? How are we like the rich young ruler? In what ways are we rich? Is Jesus the essence of your life? Is Jesus the essence of your home? Is Jesus the essence of your church? The Savior is waiting to enter your heart. Why don't you let him come in? The Savior is waiting to enter your home. Open the door and let him in. The Savior is waiting to enter your church. Yes, let's refer to the apocalypse for a moment. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. A very important passage as it relates to today's topic it's all about Jesus Revelation 3 and verse 20 the first word is a verb behold look I stand at the door and knock if any man hear my voice and will open the door 
I will force my way in. No. Open the door and I will come in. And will sup with him and he with me. The Savior is waiting. We all need love. Amen. We all need to love. We all need fellowship with God. Amen. But sometimes we choose rather to seek a secure and safe environment. We need fellowship with God, but we'd rather choose to have a meaningful life without him. We choose a sense of self-worth, being important, enjoyment, fulfillment, finding meaning in life. We often just want to gratify me, me, the captain of the team, me, the drum majorette. We live and work for money. Some get an education, some develop talents and skills, and then we trade it all for money. We seek entertainment. Even in worship, people seek to be entertained. Then we try to make more money so we can retire and entertain ourselves. We live our lives trying to fulfill the core needs that only God can fulfill. And this leads us in a life of sadness, destruction, sin, and these selfish core values control our lives. And sometimes we try to fit God in somewhere. But Jesus wants to be the essence of our life. When God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit are the captain of the team, our lives are filled with love and commitment. Love to God. Our love to God. Our love for others relationships, service to others. We were created for relations with God and relationships with others. Amen. With the early believers, Christ was so much the essence, the people that followed Christ were called Christians. And we say Christians today. A Christian accepts God's core values as their own and chooses to live by them with the power of the Holy Spirit. We live in our culture by following God's way, showing how God's way can meet our core needs with Jesus as the essence of our lives. We turn to him daily, on a regular basis, minute by minute, second by second. We turn to our living God daily, regularly, and in times of great need. And our lives demonstrate that as we abide in Him, He hears our prayers, He answers our prayers, He delivers, and God becomes personally involved in our lives. The Christian who abides allows himself or herself to be used as part of the body of Christ. The person who abides calls those around to an experience of worship of the Creator, the Sustainer, the Savior. John 15, 5 says, I am the vine, ye are the branches, he that abideth in me, the same will bring forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. So the question remains, is Jesus the essence of your life? Is he the root, the stock, the vine, the source, the resource, the indispensable quality, the primary element, the chief ingredient, the foundation, the cornerstone, the center, the main focal point, the origin, the essential fiber, the significant feature, the important quality, the substance, the lifeblood, the evidence of things not seen, the essential essence of your life. When Jesus becomes all that and more, he becomes your all in all. Amen. He becomes your everything. His intercessory prayer for his disciples hit the bullseye of him wanting to be the essence 
In John 17, 23, he says, I in them, you in me. A Christian writer, Ellen White, uses an interesting expression describing the disciples of Jesus in a book called Acts of the Apostles, page 28. Christ's name was to be their watchword, their badge of distinction, their bond of unity, their authority of their course of action, the source of their success. Nothing was to be recognized in his kingdom that did not bear his name. Christians, overwhelmed by grace, amazed by the goodness of God, and awestruck by the redemption found in Jesus, the Bible-based, Christ-centered, last-day prophetic message of present truth for this hour will move the world, will turn it upside down. And when Jesus becomes the essence of our lives, he then becomes the essence of our conversations. He becomes the essence of our actions. And daily, in the temple, and in every house, they cease not to preach Jesus. Yes, the church has been conferred with the power to act in the place of Jesus. Jesus is the master teacher. If we're to be effective substitute teachers, Jesus must be the essence of our lives. The preeminence of Christ in our lives, in our ministries, must be visible, audible, tangible. We become power substitute teachers when we are Christ-centered and spirit-controlled and scripture-based in everything we do. When Jesus becomes the essence of our lives, his presence will be seen and felt as we exhibit and demonstrate God's saving power through our lives. We must abide and walk with Jesus. Jesus wants to be our Savior and the center of our lives. He wants us to live life abundantly now. And he wants to give us eternal life with him later. He wants us all to participate in his soon coming, in his return. The essence of life is not what about you achieve, what I achieve to benefit myself, it is not the name that I make for myself or the name you make for yourself so that people can worship us like celebrities. It is not about what you've accomplished. It's not about a great audience of cheering spectators. The essence of life is to touch another life or a group of lives for Jesus. Yet we love to place ourselves on the throne while we dethrone Jesus. Reach out and touch some other life with the goodness of God. Yes, there's a story. We talked about it. It's found in Matthew chapter 19, but we need to read it. We need to take a moment and read it. Because it was so important that it's placed right there. Matthew chapter 19, beginning with verse 16. Matthew 19, beginning with verse 16. Here we have it. And behold, one came unto Jesus and said, Good Master, what good thing should I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou would enter into life, keep the commandments. And he saith unto him, Which one? Well, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, and the young man saith unto him, All these things I have kept from my youth up. 
what lack I yet? And Jesus said unto him, If thou would be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. The rich young ruler chose not to make Jesus the essence of his life. So how can you make Jesus the essence of your life? Through Bible study and prayer, through studying prophecy. Each morning, consecrate yourself and your family to God for that day. Receive constant help from God. Lay all your plans at His feet to be carried out or given up as circumstances indicate. Accept His plans instead of your own plans. Even if accepting God's plan means to abandon your plans and projects. The book Ministry of Healing on page 474 reminds us that every duty is sacred. Every duty is part of God's service. Even the humblest of duties. Pray to God, Lord, help me to do my best. Teach me to do better work. Teach me how to love as you love. Give me energy and strength and cheerfulness. And may the loving ministry of Jesus flow out of my life to others. Amen. Step to Christ. Consecrate yourself to Jesus in the morning. Make this your very first work. Pray, Lord, I lay all my plans at your feet. Abide in me. Use me today. And you thus make yourself open for Jesus to become the essence of your life. Amen. From hours spent with God, Jesus came forth morning by morning to bring the light of heaven to men and women. Bible study is compared in the scriptures to eating the bread of life and drinking the water of life. Jesus is the bread and the water of life. Desire of Ages, page 83, say many attend religious services and are refreshed by the word of God. But through neglect of meditating on the scriptures and prayer, they lose the blessing and find themselves more destitute than they were before they were refreshed and comforted by God's word because of neglecting Bible study and prayer, meditating on the scriptures. Have you ever seen a reformation that was followed by a deeper apostasy? or a revival in a church. And when things were finished, things were worse than before the revival came. Neglect of Bible study and prayer. None are living Christians until they have a daily experience in the things of God. Time alone with God at the beginning of the day. Walking and talking with Jesus all along the way. Fellowshipping with Jesus meditating on scripture, praying for communication with God, time alone every day, seeking to make Jesus the essence of your life. There's a passage in Isaiah 45 that says, look unto me and be saved, all the ends of the earth, for there is none else, nothing else, no other way, Jesus said in John 14, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one cometh unto the Father but by me. So I strongly appeal to you, make Jesus the essence of your life. Amen. He is the way, Amen. he is the truth, Amen. he is the life. How do I do this? Through meditation and prayer. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen.